Hello, 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 Karen here. Today we are going to be exploring which books to pick to alter for your art journals. Now, if you've never heard of altering a book to make an art journal, you're in for a real treat. And even if you have, you're in for a real treat because there are so many different books that you can pick. And my goal is to help you pick books that are frustration free. You can see here, I have a wide variety of books. This is actually most of my collection of books that I have picked to do altered books with. And by altering them, I mean I'm gonna be turning them into art journals. Now, a lot of these books I got in, you know, those little, those little neighborhood libraries? The ones that, you know, it's just a little box alongside the road and you get to, you know, uh, bring one and take one. A lot of these books I picked up from those, just doing my little neighborhood walk. It's, it gets me out and about and I love seeing what is in those. Now, I'll, some of these books I have also picked up at my local library because um, my local library sells books. Some of them are donated books and some of them are just old library books. And some of them, maybe one or two of them, are from half price books. But in my local half price books, I don't know about where you live, but where I live, there is a special aisle for these discounted books. And basically they're books that they don't think they're, they're, they could really sell for half price. So you can pick up books there really, really super cheap. Garage sales are also an option, although none of these are from garage sales, but I think that garage sales are also a really great bet for binding books to alter. Okay. So as you can see, we have a lot of books to go through here. I have not pre gone through this video and planned it. So we're just gonna, we're just gonna start and see where it goes. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is clear the decks and pick a book off the top of my pile to start with. So this is actually a book that I did pick up at Half Price Books. And I do believe it is in German, although I could be wrong because I don't really know languages that well. Anyway, this is a very old book. So, you know, a lot of times you think, oh, when you're doing altered books, you want to pick an old book. Well, how old is too old? <laughs> and that is a really good question because some books that are so old that the paper inside of them is really brittle and the book might be falling apart at the seams so sometimes an old book is just too old sometimes you can tell by the yellowing along the edges is a really good sign if you do pick up an old book you know check the spine make sure it's in good shape this book is actually not in too bad of a, sh of a shape and I could use this book as an altered book, but I would probably, since these pages are really thin too, I would probably glue pages together. And, um, but another thing that I have done with this book is I've turned these pages into collage papers. All right, so that's number one. Number two, this is a book that I picked up in my, uh, my neighborhood, Little Libraries. And I originally was really inspired by all of the photo photography in here. This is actually a book on shops in Berlin. <laughs> How specific is that? <laughs> and I think this book might make an okay book to alter. It's got, it's got a good spine on it. It lies fairly flat when I open it up. But I think this book might be better suited for taking the pages and using them in an art journal. Of course, you can do both. You can take out pages and you can leave pages behind to turn this into 
an art journal. Book number three. This is another very specific book. I picked this up in my local neighborhood. And this is a Starbucks Coffee Academy book that they use for training. <laughs> uh, level 100, I'm assuming that is, you know, for beginners. <laughs> What's really fun about this book and why I picked it up was because it's got the, the spiral binding. So it lies flat when you open it up. It's also got some nice heavyweight pages in it. So I know this is going to hold up really well for anything that I throw at it. You know, wet medium, collage, it's all going to work really well in this journal. And since it's a spiral bound, it will expand and get super fat, you know, fat by, you know, if you do a lot of collage in it, it tends to kind of get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, right? Yeah, of course, I can always take out pages and that's great. Another thing that I really liked about it was it's got, it's got um, some of the, like the chapters, the chapter pages, headings, whatever they call it. This is like cardstock. So some of them are actually really thick pages in it. So I really loved this option. Very cool. Next up, ah, another uh, local little library book. This book is also has that spiral binding, which I really liked. And one of the problems with this is that it's got this plastic cover on it. And this would be fine if I don't want to do anything with the cover. I just, if I just want to leave it like that. So you can see it's got, I got, you know, pictures on it and, and stuff. So if I wanted to leave this alone, I think this would make a great altered book. But I'm going to have a really hard time gluing anything down to this. Inside, one of the things that I loved about this book and why I picked it up, again, it's got those, it's got those uh, dividers in it, the section um, dividers that has that heavy cardstock. And the pages are, are fairly hefty as well. But look on the inside of this. Isn't that, I mean, this just looks like a really fun book. This is a book where you could take collage elements and do things and, and you know, leave leave some of these images behind. Um, I mean, it's a, it's a great, you know, get you started book uh, for, for any adventures that you might be doing with your art journaling. And of course, with the spiral binding, it lies flat. I love that. Also notice that this book has um, matte finish pages. You do not want to get a book that's got shiny pages. If you want frustration free, Go for the matte finish pages. Next up, this is uh, this this book. Um, I did pick up this at my local little local libraries, and I primarily picked this book because of the shape, okay, and the size. I love it because it's tall. I'm always looking for those unique shaped books, those unique sizes in books. And one of the first things that you want to do when you uh, pick up a book that's got, you know, the dust jacket on it is you want to look underneath it because for the most part, you're going to toss out the dust jacket. And you, oh, look at that. It's written by Michael Jackson. Oh, my God. <laughs> anyway, you want to look for um, a cover that is not shiny. Again, you know, bring, bringing this back into the picture, this is going to be hard to glue anything to. And you, a lot of hardback books have a very shiny cover underneath. And I haven't yet to find anything that really successfully works on it, except for maybe to cover it with, with cloth. The other thing that I really loved about this book was that the, the, the font on it is really small. So this is going to make a really great little background that, you know, you can blur out with maybe some uh, thin down white paint or some gesso. It does have some really super thin pages. So I definitely would want to glue several of them together. The spine also works really well. And as you can see here, this is what you want to look for in a hard, in a, in a hardback book. Most of, almost all hardback. Well, maybe not. You want to look for when you open it up, does it bend like this? Okay. Does it, does it open up? 
if there isn't a hole in there you're gonna have a really hard time getting your book to lie flat next up okay here's a, this is this is, is this a, yeah this is a <laughs> this is a perfect one to go next because this book is a hardback book and when I open it up no space right there's 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 sort of kind of a space in there but it's not really opening up this book is going to have a harder time lying flat but this one actually doesn't do too bad ma mainly because probably because i broke it in <laughs> i love this book because again it's got these super fun inside pages that you know these are you can leave some of these elements in there maybe do some collage or some painting um, around it or uh, uh, you know over the text and leave some of that other stuff behind i love books that have give me something that i can start with i don't want to be staring at just a bunch of words and and a blank page okay oh i just picked this one up the other day my husband tried to convince me that maybe it's a collector collector's item <laughs> cooking with foil from Reynolds this is has some unique factors um one of the things that I don't like about it is that the the cover is kind of shiny but I I don't think it's too shiny I think I can work with it but look at the shape of this I love looking for books that have a unique shape everything about this book it, it's got a unique shape there and you see you've got a little curve on the end but look at this it's like one of those baby books that's got the really super hard cardboard in it okay this is a baby book <laughs> and when i open it up guess what i got that space right there so i know it's gonna lie flat now this is probably not a frustration free book because the pages are shiny and i'm gonna be really challenged with gluing things down but you know what i i have enough experience with these things challenge accepted okay oh now these are great the the little golden books the spine is again it, it's a hardback book you don't see that space but they do tend to lie really flat and especially if they're if they're well worn like this book is and of course it's got all these wonderful imageries in it that you can leave and make part of your story while you do some collage around them i i have had a lot of fun working in these little golden books and i've even taken um, taken them and cut the cut them to so they i can give them a shape okay next up but i have a lot of little library books here this should ju i should have just named this my little library ultra book collection <laughs> So this is one of those books you've probably seen these before these these post this book and these are are books that you know are meant to be you know colored in painted in drawn in written in they're kind of like you know those little journal books and this one is less than ideal though because of the binding on it so it's not gonna well it's gonna lie flat if I break the spine like I did right there but if you break the spine too much you know how it is when you know if your if your spine's intact it looks like that right once you broke it completely then you get this space in here and what can be problematic about this is in a lot of cases your pages are going to start to fall out so you do want to break in a book but you want to do it gently and when I get a book like this now this one was broke when I when I got it what I do is I start in the middle and I just gently start opening it up and then I half that so I'm going to like to the quarter and then I go to the back and I just keep halving those so I'm kind of just gently gently breaking that spine in so it's not breaking it completely like it is in the middle and I'm just gently tugging on it here and every few pages do that and after you do that enough after you do that throughout the whole book it will start to lie flat without forcing it this is just really gentle but of course 
another great way to get your book to stay open because you know this is a frustration free <laughs> art journaling book share is these little binder clips now these ones i just picked up in the dollar store and this book even with the binder clips it's kind of you know it, it's going to be hard to work in so this is one i've had for a while and i don't think i'm going to do anything with but 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 <laughs> it's got these wonderful little images in it sayings and words and i mean the this could make really great papers to use in my art journal so that's why i've hung on to that one okay another one um hardback book open it up i got that nice little space in there and so i know that i can get it to lie flat this is also there's also a big difference between this book and this one is this has a glued binding so all the pages are glued together to to bind them okay this is different this is stitched it's sewn and i can tell that because i can see the stitching in here and anytime you've got a book that's stitched together it's going to hold together better when it is opened flat like this and you don't really have to worry about breaking the spine because your pages are not going to fall out. They are sewn in. Yes, there is some glue in there as well. And in between the signatures, signatures are the pages that they fold together and, and then put into the book and books are made up of several signatures. This book, I love this book because of its size. It's nice and small. It's portable. It even comes with its own built-in bookmark uh, it is a journal for for writing in it's a gratitude journal and I love that because it'll encourage me to write in my journal but yet I can do collage I can do um, paint I can do anything I want in here really it can, because you know it's mine <laughs> this is one uh, this is an old library book when you pick up an old library book, they'll generally have these shiny um, plastic covers on them and you're going to want to remove them. But before you pick up this book and, and take it home, take a peek inside. Take a peek at the cover and make sure it's not one of those shiny covers. OK, so if it's a shiny one, you're going to have a really hard time with this. This is a nice matte finish. I can do just about anything that I want on it. Um, and, you know, I can draw on it. I can I can glue it. Um, glue on collage materials, um, paints, just about anything on that cover. So when you get library books, double check on the inside of the cover. That's going to work for you. Another book. This one is a sewn bound one. When I open it up, I can see that space. It lies nice and flat. Now know that when you first buy books like this, and this one I did buy, I can't remember where, but I, I did pick it up. I probably picked it up at some discount store. It doesn't always lie flat when you first get them, okay? You might have to do that gentle breaking in of the spine just to get it to work. I love this one because, you know, it's got those it's got those spaces to write in it. And yet it's got some great imagery and I can do some paint and collage and whatever I want in it. And of course, no shiny cover. Love that. OK, here is one not frustration free shiny cover. I cannot stress this enough. I uh, I there is so many problems when it comes to shiny covers. Yes, you you know, you'll find people that say, oh, all you need to do is sand it down. Yeah, well, I've tried that. <laughs> Not everything works out. But what I like about this book is it's got some great pages to use maybe in other books. So I wouldn't because the spine doesn't lie flat and it never will lie flat. Even though it is stitched together, I can see that it's stitched together because it's in there. I see stitching. It'll still never lie flat because it's so tightly glued up here and the signatures look like they're pretty big. Anyway, this is a great book for using the imagery from it's just got a lot of a lot of variety. I always look for that in books too. 
if it's got a lot of variety inside, I can probably make some use out of that. Okay, another book. Uh, this one I picked up used, and it is another one of those journals that you can write in and do things in. It is a hardbound book, but guess what? Oh, so sad. No space. The reason why I haven't done anything with this journal is because I can't get the darn thing to lie flat. Even if I wanted to write in it. It's just this... Ah! Books like this, if they're, if they're sewn together, sometimes I deconstruct them. Which means I take it apart. I take all the stitching out and I restitch it with a Coptic binding to get it to lie flat. But this one is not stitched. It is, well, it, there might be some stitching in there somewhere. I can't find it. It's not very obvious. Nope. And it's glued. It's, this, this is a wonderful book, but I just, I can't, I can't use it. So I will probably use the, the images in it, use the pages in it in another journal. Ah, <sighs> well, I can't wait to dive into these and start working in some of these as altered book art journals. I've been collecting these for several years now and it's time to stop collecting and it's time to start doing something, right? <laughs> it's so easy to get caught up with consuming. We consume, consume, consume. Well, you know. Okay. Well, that's it for today. I am super excited about working in these new art journals here. We'll just call them art journals because, you know, an altered book, I really think is kind of something different, but we're actually going to be taking old books and turning them into art journals. It's a great way to give an old book new life. And I know, I know, I know, I know there's, there can be a lot of guilt around doing, you know, doing this to books, but trust me, there's a lot of books out there. And a lot of these books were heading to the dumpster anyway. You know, I mean, especially when you, you consider like the, uh, what was that? The, the, the Starbucks? <laughs> yeah, seriously, you know, I mean, it, you know, you can absolutely find books that you have no qualms about working in. Okay, so get out there, find some books, go for a walk, visit those local libraries, and see what you can find. And I will see you in the next video. Okay, bye-bye.